Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow what you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. E4, let's go for E5. Okay, knight there. Um, I think we have, I think we have seen this before. And I'm trying to remember exactly what we said. I think we said bishop here, because previously we've been going here and the Vienna was like giving us some trouble. So I, I think I remember looking at this with you guys and we said bishop c5, right? Bishop c5, I seem to recall, I seem to recall. Here, we'll go pawn there and knight there. Thank you for the prime, guys. Appreciate that, honestly. Prime subs, they're you know, the, the, greatest, the greatest thing we have in this world. Thank you, Tom Tom, for the uh, confirmation. Tom Tom Tom. Already goes D3. Um, I think, I think in, in this case, like preventing Bishop there is very much in line with what we've been talking about. When we see this pawn, we want to stop the pin. So let's do that. We'll play. Okay, we'll start with the knight. Makes more sense. Um, D6, castle. Yeah, you can play the London system against everything. Um, queen there. Don't really know what he's doing. I think he's afraid of having double pawns, so he wants to play bishop there. If he does play bishop there, we're going to go bishop back, right? We're going to play bishop back. That's castle. We want to play bishop here. Okay, every time we get attacked, we go back. We're not going to change it now. It should be six. Hopefully none of the moves, not a single move I've played so far should be surprising to you guys. We've played these positions before. I always put the bishops here. I don't mind capturing, doubling my pawns. That's something we've gotten used to in level three. Let's develop the queen. And let's bring the rook to the, the middle. We've talked about what we do when the pawns are doubled. Where do the rooks go? Well, we leave one of them on the open file. And the other one we bring here. Why do we not bring it to the d file? We've talked about this before. Because our plan is to play d5 after takes takes. It's actually the e pawn that needs support. Not the d pawn. The d pawn is covered enough. The open file is going to be against our e pawn. So we want a rook on the e file. That's right. Um, he just played a move which does have a threat. Um, thankfully... <laughs> Maybe luckily, um, I think I have some random pawn moves to play that actually, I only have one pawn over here and it's this one. And it's actually a pretty decent move. Uh, but the issue with pawn up was maybe he would play his pawn up, hit my knight and win this pawn if I put my pawn there. So that's actually very convenient. Random pawn moves OP. He goes knight there. I'm sort of going to play this without thinking because that was my plan and I don't see a knight to the side of the board changing my plan over here. Pawn push in the middle. Okay, hitting the rook. I think the simplest thing to do is you know, move the rook. Uh, 97, it's just unnecessary to tangle yourself up like that. Let's just get out of harm's way. Knight g6. So his knight's in there, but it's not really doing anything. Right? It's attacking zero things. Uh, it's attacking this, but it was attacking that all the way from f3 as well. So nothing's really changed. You know, maybe it looks scary to you guys, but it's not doing that much. 
It's not doing that much. Kick out that bishop with b6 makes a lot of sense. Not only is it a pawn move, but kicking that bishop out, sending it back. Kick everything. Kick everything out. Ooh, that's a fancy move. Pawn takes. Okay. Well, my knight was hanging, so I guess I'll just take back in the center, undouble my pawns. It looks very good. And how are we going to continue? Bishop goes back. I mean, we could kick this knight out like this, but um, I've always said pawn moves in the center. Always going to be good, so let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. He closes it up. Now it's up to me. Now it's up to me. Again, the moves that get played here, it might be a bit subjective, but um, just slowly improving my queen just a little bit. Um, I might want to move this knight. Why? Because the knight's not doing anything right now. It's like it's a hitting two pawns that are very well defended. So I don't like this knight. I, I want to move this knight. Why not king h7? I actually think king h7 was a better move than queen, a, queen f5, but I don't think it's everybody's instinct necessarily to move their king. Um, so I decided to, to go with the queen. But I actually think king at h7 is better. Knight f4. He's got a solid square there. Random king moves. Yeah, I wish, I wish. What about b5 hanging? It's it's doing exactly that. It's it's on b5 and it's hanging. Nothing I can do about it, really. Knight a7, not the type of move we want to play. I'd honestly rather you guys hang pawns than play moves like knight a5, knight, knight a7. You'll be better off, I promise. g4. It's very interesting. These, these guys that play uh, these moves, g4. Like, it's so bad. Why do they play it? Why do they play it? To Fianchetto the knight? Knight g2? What's going on here? What's going on here? Someone asked me, what's the best way to rotate the knight? Well, what about this guy? We brought it back. Where else can it go? Can't go here. How about there? You know, it's got some squares to hit. Okay, he plays a3. Can you imagine, like, what's going on in his brain right now? g4 and then a3. Are those moves connected at all? Like, you know what I mean? The, the moves that I'm making, they're all on the same side of the board. It's, there's some connection between each move. But when you're making moves like this, it just have nothing to do with each other. Try to focus on one sort of centric plan or one side of the board or something. So, doubling the rooks on an open file. I'm, how am I going to chastise anyone for doing that? Okay, queen d2. Uh, guys, whew, uh, guys, heads up. He's going to checkmate us. Uh, we're super scared of that, right, guys? We're, we're frightened, right? I'm just going to play c6 because I really, oh, I really want this to happen. Yep, we're, uh, looks like we're getting mate, bo mated, boys. Let's uh, wrap it up. Wrap it up. No, we didn't take. He didn't take. He didn't pull the trigger. Okay, so I've got two rooks on the open file, but I got a knight in the way. You know what? We improved this knight over here. Now it's time for this knight to improve. I know it's on a good square, but you know it can't actually move to any square from f6 too effectively. So we need to we need to reroute it. We need to put it somewhere useful. This is going to be you know a difficult move for you guys to play. 98 going backwards, but it gets out of the way for these rooks. And where else can this knight go? Oh, it can go here. It can go here. And isn't that a beautiful square? It could go here and here, right? Maybe into that square. So you have a lot of options if you just reposition the knight. Just a fresh look at the position. But I certainly agree. 98, backwards move, tough to spot. You have to remember, what is my opponent doing? He's playing moves like this, this, this. He's not doing anything. So I have a lot of time to like draw zigzags and move my knight around, you know, and just put it on a better square. He's, he's doing, like, what, what, what the hell are these moves? Now, what's our next move going to be? Well, just increase the pressure. 
That rook wants to slide in there. Attacking that pawn. Oh no, guys, we're getting meted. Oh man, I I missed this. We're we're checkmated now. Man. Oh no. We're getting mated. Wait. He only has a queen there. Are you kidding me? This guy this man just went back to C1. And there's definitely some people in the chat that would be scared of that attack. You know who you are. Uh, let's go for trades. Trades. And what did I say about pre-moves near the king? Okay. We're going to practice them. Oh, that's a pre-move. It's a draw by repetition, you see? He's doing the same thing as me. <laughs> wow. He's doing the same thing as me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think he's watching habits. You see how good that was by him though? Seriously. That's that's how you play speedy. That's how you play speedy, man. He's down a piece, but he's he should have won the game if I didn't do the exact same thing. <laughs> Why pre-moves near the king? Because if I start pre-moving my queen over here. He could also do a pre-move like this or something and take me or take my queen there. But if I'm pre-moving like this, it's defended. So it means that he can never do like a cheesy pre-move to, to win my piece. Because if he tries to win my queen when it's near my king, it's going to be check. You know what I mean? Or it's going to be protected. What a weird way to flag. It's a very effective way to flag. Move your pieces on squares where they're all protecting each other and just move them very quickly. If your opponent's slow, it'll work for sure. However, my opponent was doing the exact same thing, so it didn't work that well. A well-deserved draw. Now, you played well at the end. Like, very, very impressive. However, bishop takes h6. Big joke. There are definitely some people in the chat who are probably shaking in their boots when bishop h6 is played. You guys got to remember, there's de defense is a part of the game. It's a skill. You know? So the sacrifices don't just work. <laughs> the guy's got one queen. I've got two rooks, a knight, and a queen near my king. There's no way it works. There's just no way. Let's continue. We got an easy plus one from that game. Easy plus one. Easy plus one. And here we go. E4. Okay, knight f3. You guys know I'm coming in with knight c3. Knights first. Like every time. Bishop out. D3. Am I a broken record or what? Bishop to g5. D6. Well... Let's put him in the dirt. Knight d5. Whenever we can get this. You know, it's, it's a privilege. Let's go here. In fact, you know what, guys? We've played this exact game before, haven't we? We've played this exact game before. I've had the, an entire game go this way. Oh, knight d4. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe Buddy doesn't know what's going on. Maybe, yeah. Wow, what a move by my opponent. But seriously... You guys are wondering why I'm playing knight d4? I've literally played this entire game before. The entire thing. The, the, the whole entire game. <laughs> this, is, this has been on the board in a previous game. So why am I playing like so fast? Well, I mean, I can show you after the game. We'll, we'll definitely analyze it. But the point is, when you get bishop d5, knight d5, you double his pawns. You put your bishop there. All you want to do is focus on getting your queen here for checkmate. He goes f5. It's a great move. It stops uh, queen g4. Very important, okay? Um, he is still, I mean, he's still losing his rook. We'll take the material. You bet knight f5 is better than taking the rook? <laughs> I like knight f5, but I, I still have a feeling taking the rook is probably best. Okay. Um, let's probably continue to open things up with this. I would say queen h5 is like a, it's a good move to do. It's a good move to do to get the queen out. Um, castling probably makes a lot of sense. Opening the position makes a lot of sense. If you play queen h5, I, I think it's a good move, but not really a habits move, you know? Castling ASAP makes, makes a lot of sense. Okay, it goes queen here. Well, let's offer a trade. Let's offer a trade.
Trades are good. More trades. And even better than trades, free stuff. Free stuff. Okay. And we are going to bring the other rook over. Two rooks on the open file. It's exactly where they want to be. You don't want to have the rooks behind pawns. Can't exert their pressure. Here we have this. Okay. Uh, rooks being attacked. I'm going to go somewhere safe. I'm going to go back here. I could go to f7. But I'm going to go back and just double up. Do you think, enemy owner? You think people just play worse when they play against me? Okay. Wow. This guy just played rook here, rook here, rook here. I wonder what he's doing. H3. A move we need to play anyway. A move we need to play anyway. H H3 is just part of habits. Queen of G3. Can I offer him a trade? Would you like a trade, sir? Queen for queen. Good deal. Hmm. He's refusing uh, to trade with me. Well, I think it's time to use some of this firepower. Let's give a check. <laughs> Elkine's gun. Not quite. Not quite, but I see where you're coming from. G3? You mean pawn G3? I, I think it hangs that pawn if you meant last turn. If you meant this turn, then you're a tricky guy. You want him to take so you can play rook G2. Suggestions? Well, I think I think here our pawn is hanging. Um, this pawn is also hanging because it's pinned. I think a move like rook f3 is reasonable. I also think if I play queen here, he's probably going to take this pawn. I just have this weird feeling. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you. This is so telegraphed. This guy has been jerking it to this tactic ever since he put his queen there. He's, oh my god, it's a pin. <laughs> Get him out of here. Get him out of here. And there was a perfectly good pawn he could have taken on e3, but of course he's not going to take that. Of course he's going to do this. Why? Because there's no board vision. He sees a move like that, he's like, all right, you want my pawns? I get to do my tactic. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. Get him out of here. Oh, we're playing a Canadian. D4, D5. This is our, this is our opening. We go for this every time. Knight there. Okay, we go knight here. And remember, if we see bishop there, we play a6. That's the Jopava London. We've talked about that. Bishop there. Okay. Okay. If he takes, we're going to have double pawns, so I'm going to put my pawn here. And we're going to go for our, our usual setup. Okay, h6, of course, always want to challenge that bishop. Oh, he did take it. Okay. Okay. He did take it. Interesting. So, in this position, how are we going to get developed? Well, I would play it the same way we play against the London. Right? You know, pawn here, knight here, bishop here, castle. Same thing. Same thing. If he takes it, I'll be much obliged to take back. You know, knights out, uh, castling. Okay, always just gonna ask that bishop what it's doing there every time. Okay, castling. And rook to e1. I think I have an important decision to make. Where am I going to put my rooks? Where are we going to put my rooks? Okay. Uh, this is always a candidate. Like, at least that's something you should think about for sure. Okay. Center. Those are always candidates. No matter what. 
<laughs> Always vibe check the bishop. That's a great way to put it. Always vibe check the bishop. So he's giving me control of the center. I've got the two bishops. Um, I would say like, you know, rook on the open file, good place to start. E5 looks good, I agree, but you know why I played this? Because of course he's gonna play that. That's just you putting your rook on an open file and being rewarded. You guys would play e5. I would play rook b8. Look at the difference. My game ended five seconds later. Always play the moves that end the game five seconds later. Decent habit. Seriously. Rook to the open file. It's just a good place to start. Even if he doesn't blunder this. Okay, I go rook here. He guards that. Then I can play e5, just like you guys. But it's just, it's a threat. It's a threat. All right, e4. What's he going to do? Uh, sorry, is he going to do? Should be the question. He is not going to do. <laughs> Next game. Okay, e4 again. I'm telling you, e4 is scaring some people off. <laughs> e4 is uh, scaring some people. Okay, we got knight c6, we go c3. g6, d4. We already have a good position. We should be happy. Some center pawns. We're going to be playing d5. Why d5? The knight is there, and we want to kick that guy around. We want to kick that guy around. Not quite the PFT, because that pawn didn't go up for, for that. Okay, now e5. What have I told you guys about uh, moves like e5, d5? Whenever you see them, take, right? I've always said capture, capture, capture. I want you guys to open the position. I don't want to see anyone playing d5. Open the position. Tactics are going to happen. Open. Open, open, open. Okay. We're just going to take and develop. Pieces to those normal squares, those good squares. Bishop c4. Okay, 97. And I think people have been absolutely pining for this move all day. You know, you guys are like crack addicts for this move. Bishop h6, why is that so strong? It stops him from castling. It stops him from castling. It's very, very unpleasant for him. Keeps that king stuck in the middle. Queen to a5. Do I care what this guy is doing? Nope. Do I care about a pawn? Losing a pawn here? Guys, no, no, no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Look at the position. Because you made that decision earlier, it's a wide open game. Didn't queen d5 win a piece? What? I think. I think no. Queen f6. Just have it. <coughs> Just have it. Queen developed. We're going to bring the rook to the middle. He meant queen d5 won a piece for the opponent. Okay, acceptable answer. Acceptable answer. Let's just bring the rooks. Uh, rook d1. I mean, it's an open file. <laughs> Not going to complain. Couple open files. Look at this bishop keeping that king caged in. Center of the board. We need to open things up. There are going to be some tactics here. You can already tell. You can already tell. What do I want to make sure to do before we go and checkmate this king, though? Okay. Uh, first of all, bishop's being attacked. Let's just save that guy. Uh, what do I want to make sure we do? I know you guys are not going to like me for this. Because there might be so many checkmates we want to go for, but we're going to play h3. Good habits. It means that even if this attack fails, we've always got this move to fall back on h3. There we go. I think it's important. He goes f6 again. Let's move that bishop. Let's save it. Oh, 
Okay, now we finally have uh we finally have this this pawn push. We have all the pieces out. Now we get to think more aggressively. How are we gonna win this position? Guys, he has one queen out, not a single other piece has moved. And his king's stuck in the center. We need to be very decisive here. How can we how can we just crush? Where are the where are the decisive wins? I'm seeing a lot of uh, different suggestions. I'm seeing e5, bishop d6. I'm seeing rook e1 for e5. Bishop takes knight. Guys, all we need to do is attack his rook. Where, where can it go? It's completely stuck. You win an entire, win an entire rook. Let's keep it simple. Just make a threat, win an entire rook. Keep it simple. Plus, queen d5 is a very nice centralizing move. It even lines up with the bishop. Maybe some uh, threats down there. Bishop d5 would have worked as well, 100%. But queen is, you know, a more powerful piece. So usually getting my queen down here instead of getting my bishop down there is, is going to be more dangerous for him. So I want to use the queen instead of the bishop. g5. Attacking my bishop. Now, again, definitely a very good move, but I think we don't even need to give him the satisfaction of being able to take my bishop. Oh, he doesn't even have the satisfaction of staying in this game. Let's play bishop d6. Attack his queen. We've still got this threat. If you took the rook there and cashed in, uh, obviously that would be a, a great move. There's no worries about that, but just save your piece. You, you know that this rook's not going anywhere. You know that for a fact. Let's take it. So there's no need to rush and maybe lose your piece in the process. I mean, it's just brutal. That's just a, an absolute destruction of his position. He has every single piece on the back. Right? You know, he's not even moving. He can't, he can't move a single piece. It's just terrible. These bishops are killing him. There's an open position. It's just lethal. Why did that happen? Number one, because we opened the position here. Very important decision. I don't want to see any... So many people would play d5 here. I know it. If you're not, if you're not playing d5, then I'm very proud of you. But it's so tempting. It hits the knight. You guys are like, oh yeah, let's gain time. Gaining time means that you're doing something that attacks something in his position while also improving your position. If you're just attacking something of his, but you're not improving something in your position, you're not gaining time. Not gaining time at all. Doesn't d5 gain space? Sure, sure, sure does. But think of it this way. If you play d5, okay, he's got a pawn in the center, you got a pawn in the center, he's covering d4. Your pawns are actually taking squares from your pieces. If you take, you have a pawn in the center and he has nothing. You still have more space than him. The only difference is the position is open and not closed. Open means tactics. It's going to be a lot of tactics. I've said time and time again when we're doing this series, I want you guys to open the position wherever possible. Don't shy away from it. Open it. It's going to teach you tactics. If you close the position and play d5, are there going to be any tactics available in that position? No, it's going to be closed. It's going to be like a long, boring game. Open the position. This is where, this is where the guy's going to make a, a position. Well, he's going to make mistakes. It's going to put him here. Do you guys think we'd ever get to a position like this with a closed center? No, it'd be like a 50-move game. So, crushing game, but... You will have games like this when you open the position. You won't if you close it up. Okay, e4. We know what we're doing. e5. Thank you, Grams, for the gifted sub and Lumen. Using Prime, two months. Thank you. Okay, knight. Bishop c4. We know we go here. We don't want to deal with knight uh, g5. This is our standard opening. Cheers, Professor. C3, we've seen this before. In fact, we recently studied this. Last time, actually. Does anyone remember what happens after this? Well, um, we don't have to remember what happens after this. We got a low-energy Knight G5 player. My favorite. This is what we call hope chess. My guy just played Knight G5. I castled. 
I played h6, both useful moves that I was going to do anyway. And you move back. Like, what? you know what I mean? <laughs> what are these low energy moves? They do nothing. They do nothing. Okay, let's continue to develop. Bishop here, we want to get this. Uh, there we go. We want to get this in. We want to go like queen there, rook over. We've had this position even a couple of games ago today. So this should not be... Guys, what is this? Knight to h4. We've seen this. Dude, these guys keep playing knight to h4. Get him out of here. Knight takes e4 every single time. Every single time. His knight is going to g5, f3, h4, g6. This is a world traveler over here. He hasn't developed a single other piece. He's castled, and then he's sending his knight on a mission. What are we supposed to do now? Knight just moved, attacking our rook. Rook takes f2. Okay. Use our rook. Use all of our pieces. Use the fact that he hasn't touched a single one. I mean... But this is just, these are not difficult games. <laughs> this just straight up. They're just not difficult, right? What are we going to do here? Someone help me out. Win that queen. Sure. Nice and simple. Don't need to overthink. That's a check, remember. That's a check. So, so take our free queen, sure. Now, we got to develop. Queen f6. At this point, we're looking to go for the kill. I see every single piece there. Queen f6 just hits the knight. And, well, congratulations, dude. You moved your knight 10 times and you still lost it. He's about to lose the only piece he's developed. Knight takes e5. I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy. This, is, this has been a, a crush. Let's make sure to finish development. Rook to the open file. H3. Yeah. There's a good habit from uh, Ralph Mate over there. Yeah. Nice one, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to get some marks uh, on the exam for that one. You can't believe you're hard stuck in this elo for over a year. Guys, do, do I have any 1500s in chat? Do any of you guys play like this? Lost in 15 moves and hanging every single piece? Isn't this just not acceptable? You guys are better than this. Maybe get the knight involved, get the queen involved. I mean, it's just every move is just, let's just bring the pieces closer to the king. It's, it's very close to being a checkmate. Yep, that's, a, of course, a very good move, Loafs, but <laughs> we're going to try to do this in a, uh, in a cleaner way. Okay, Rook F1, let's just save the queen. <laughs> you you want to trade pieces? Go for it, bud. 1280, and you feel like you don't play this bad, but you probably do. Yeah, anyone who's watching this and is lower rated than this and saying things like, Wow, this guy plays so bad. Like, I, I should be higher rated than that. The same people that are saying that are the same people that, in this position, would probably play h6 and allow knight takes f7. So, yeah. Uh, okay, trades. You're not going not gonna to see any opposition from me. Okay. Just, you know, just do it. Check. Check. And I mean, guys, just get him out of here. Seriously, this was obviously not a good game. I'm not roasting the guy. I'm, I'm obliterating him. You know, he, he needs to learn. Hope he's listening, but seriously, I hope everyone's listening. This is just not acceptable. Look at this. He moved the knight like 10 times in the opening. This was great. I thought he was going to play d4. But instead he goes here. It's like, okay, he's going for some cheese. Then he goes back. All right, he's got a normal position. 
It's just fine, right? Just just normal moves. Bishop e3, knight d2. This is all good. Knight h4, not the same piece again. Like, what is he doing with knight h4? Does he want to play here? Attack my rook? I'm going to move the rook, and then what? What's the end of the road? He's going for one move attacks. You want to have a very complete idea of what you're doing in your game. Not just take one piece and attack as many things as you can with it. And obviously he got punished for that. It doesn't work out. He, I mean, these pieces didn't even move and the game ended. You know what I mean? <laughs> they didn't even move and the game ended. Uh, let's go E4. That's five months for him. Matt Taylor Law with four months. Use all your uh, building habits to teach high school chess. Lucky to found the stream in time. Yo, shout out, Matt. Appreciate that, dude. Hopefully they're learning as well. Uh, with the prime sub. <laughs> Colin Odis with the prime as well. Thanks, big Colin. Knight F3 really uh, sent him for a, for a trip here. Okay, knights first. Thanks, Corsair, for the uh, the two months of Jacko. 34 months. Big Jack coming up in three years. Appreciate it, Jacko. All right, let's go. Actually, remember, when he goes there, I'm probably going to be playing d4, guys. Yep. This is a little bit more passive than bishop there. I've, I've been saying whenever you can get that d4 move, we always do it. But most of my opponents play uh, bishop c5, so I'm not able to do d4. Wilkie, 28 months. Wilkie, 9. Um, wow, very uh, very serious move by my opponent. Knight takes e4. Well, I mean, I gotta take it. I gotta take it. The Magnemite, can he play knight takes e4? Absolutely. But I've been playing the two knights and the bishop the entire habit series. The entire habit series. Nobody has played knight takes e4 until now. This is the actual first time that I have ever seen it. Seriously. So, he's threatening to uh, win one of my pieces back. What are we going to do here? It's a, it's a strong move by him. It's a strong move by him. We still have to, still have to react accordingly. Knight takes c6. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, we definitely want to be careful. You know, we move the bishop back. We just hang this knight, for example. So, um, this looks fine. Okay, and now we are going to lose one of these pieces. Okay, so which one should we lose? Hopefully, we agree that the bishop is the one to save. Okay, so save the bishop. This is how we save the bishop. There we go. Now, I wonder if he's going to trade. What are we going to do? Hopefully, keep developing the bishop somewhere. We've got h3. Uh, we've got two open lines in the middle of the board. Isn't this better for us? This is. This is definitely a little bit better for us. Okay, bishop there. I know there's pawns hanging. I know there's pawns hanging. C6, for example. But let's go here and see what he does. I'm curious what he's going to do after bishop to e3. It's bishop, D, bishop d6. It's very easy to miss what he might be up to. Let's go bishop e3. Just a developing move. Okay, he goes um, bishop b7. Now it's time to get our queen developed. Um, and then the, you know, the rooks want to swing over and h3. Uh, yeah, Faith, you could think of it like that. Helps him develop the rook. But I'm mostly thinking from the perspective of I don't want to be too greedy and take a pawn when I'm not finished development and when I'm not completely developed. Why do we agree to keep the bishop instead of the knight? Uh, the position's wide open. As you can see, this bishop is, you know, looking in every direction. Very, very strong piece. Plus the bishop pair together is usually very good. So get the rook over. H3 so we don't get back ranked. You're absolutely right. I'm just trying to bring the rooks in, but H3 is on my radar. Well, it's uh, useful, right? It's useful that I'm ready to play h3, and I was going to play it anyway. Now, after rook d8, he 
is threatening to play bishop h2 and win my queen. So, got to get out of the way, and we have to move somewhere where it's still protecting my bishop. So I'm going to play queen c4. And I would be surprised if he doesn't play this move. That looks pretty reasonable. Rooks to the middle, habits, all that. Oh, wow. Thank you, Dylan. You're welcome. Beautiful. Looks beautiful. The past. Uh... King h8. Wow, he's insane. He's insane. Okay, guys, I'm calling a, uh, a technical timeout to appreciate the food. We got, oh, just, we got, the, oh, so, uh, green onions, I see chicken, oh, <laughs> big, big pog from Big Dale. Oof, oof. This is looking tasty, boys. All right, great move by him. I was threatening bishop h7. Um, let me continue with completing my development. Let's see if this bite of food oof, is as good as it looks. There's no way it's not as good as it looks. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay, it's very good. A tricky move. I cannot take that. I cannot take that. Guarding my queen. Yes, exactly. The opponent is playing way better than the other 1500. Way better. Got another league. Yeah, the feeling of a good first bite. Oh, he's threatening something, boys. How are we going to stop that? How are we going to stop that? I think I have two main moves. Because this is obviously something to be very, very careful of. Um, G3 and F4. Now, to be honest, I think F4 is a move we wouldn't play as much as we'd play G3. Um, even though some of the people in chat, some of the stronger players might be able to recognize He's very, very dangerous. But I think it's the more natural move. I do. Right? This is very dangerous, but that's tough to... It's not simple to realize. Okay, so great thing to do would be after g3. He goes here. He wants to play queen here. Whether I realize that or not, bishop b4 is a fantastic move. Looking to trade the bishops. Then the queen comes over. And all my issues on this square were gone. And I mean, it's just another league the way my opponent is playing compared to the last guy. It's crazy. Okay, let's try to take a pawn. Okay. One thing that I have been doing is when, when you're getting low on time, it's a good idea to trade because it's easier to make pre-moves, number one, without queens on the board, and um, number two, just with less pieces in general, it's easier to pre-move. So my opponent is doing a great job. I'm just hitting that pawn. He's not trading with me, which makes it harder and harder to pre-move. Five. I mean, dude, this, this is what a fifteen hundred should look like—a solid, solid game.
technically a trade. Now, when it comes to pre-moving, for example, I might just start like this. It's just it's near my king. I literally might just do two moves in a row. I might just push this pawn. I might do this king move. Oh, okay, he's doing something over there. I'm doing this. But when I'm pre-moving, I might just go here. All around my king. Now, they're not good moves, right? He's got this. They're near the king. They're all they're all sort of safe. Here, okay, I'm going to try to like, maybe pre-move my king. Oh, he's going to go here. Let's get a check. Put the rook behind the pawn. Checks are nice because you can always get the next move. Pre-move. Okay, pre-move. Like I'm not, I'm not actually doing anything with, <laughs> just pre-moving my king. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not actually thinking or calculating anything. I've moved my king for like 30 straight moves. <laughs> it's not that difficult. I just, just move my king in circle for 30 moves or something. <laughs> it hurts to see how easy it is sometimes to flag people. People are very slow and nobody uses pre-moves properly. Not that difficult, says the GM. Uh, yes, says the GM. Because it's not like any of my moves were G GM caliber. What what was good was putting my rook there. I agree, that was good. But rook's behind pass bonds. That's uh, that's ironed in at this point. We should know that. We have to know that. I have 7.9 seconds to 38. I'm just pre-moving things like this, literally back and forth. Literally back and forth. Okay, until he does something. That already got 10 seconds off his clock and one second off my clock. Right? At that rate, I am just going to flag people. E4, E5. Ah, we don't see this one very often. We don't see this one very often. Does anyone remember the opening that we said we were going to use against this? Not d5, no. d5 is a gambit, by the way. We're not playing gambits. We said we were going to take, and then play d5. Now, as for this, I don't think we've seen this before. Why not? Because this move allows queen h4 check. Kind of an issue, normally, right? That's why they start with knight f3. So we actually can no longer play the move we wanted to play. And we're playing an opening for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and um, play a move, knight f6, that seemingly is going to help me play d5. To me, that you know makes sense as something we might try to do. When we're faced with something new, we're like, oh, damn, wait. Let me try to, <laughs> you know, let me try to play that uh, move order again. All I know is that I want to play d5, so I'm going to try to play knight there to facilitate it. I'm going to try to go back to something that I already know. Oh, and it looks like we can get d5, so that's not too bad. Why not put the check with the queen? Well, it's a good move, but it's not really the system that I said I was going to be playing against this. And I think you're going to have a better chance of success playing something you're familiar with. That's for sure. And in case you guys are curious, outside of the habits. Um, queen h4 is simply a variation. After king f1, white then plays his knights f3, and it's a, it's a regular variation. Hey, Peru, man. I'm not eating poutine. I'm eating some, some of Dylan's pasta. Okay. Trade. Just gonna develop bishop here, bishop out. Trades are good. Let's move this guy. It hasn't moved yet. Hey, see what my opponent's doing? He has an open file. 
grabs it. He has an open file, he grabs it. This is exactly what I was telling you guys to do. There might be other moves you want to do, but always start with this. If I play b6, all of a sudden my knight is loose, right? I have to watch out. So I will play b6. I think rook b8, though, is reasonable as well. But this knight can be attacked now. Okay, queen e1, I'm going to offer a trade. I am going to offer a trade. Hey, Eric, long time viewer, first time chatter here. I'd love to see you shotgun a beer tonight. My man is demanding. Okay, please queen g3. Fair enough. I'm going to take this. There's actually an option which one he wants to take. Yes, I was actually I was actually just looking at his chat history. So Erod has a chat history of 531 messages and all of them start with hey Eric or hey Amon. Hey Eric, would you rather be hungover or high at a classical tournament? Hey Eric, long time viewer, first time chatter. Any chance we can see you smoke a swisher tonight? Hey Eric, love you buddy. Hey Eric, long time viewer, first time chatter. Do you vape off stream? <laughs> He's a very consistent, very consistent history. He's been chatting that way for a long time. Any chance we get to see you smoke a swisher? <laughs> Erod is a very consistent chatter. Meanwhile, I'm getting dummied over here. We are still level three, yes. I want to bring the rook over. We always have trouble against this opening, though, honestly. I want to bring the rook over. I would normally bring this rook over, but I, I simply need it in defense. Rook b5. These are some very good moves, honestly. These are some very good moves. Um, I'm going to bring the rook over. There's a lot of a uh, lot of strong options here. This is one of them. Knight takes h7. King takes. I mean, what else? He's hitting my knight. But you got to give credit. A guy who's playing like this. I mean, this is just a beautiful game. We have to go here. So we'll get mated if we go there. But this. This is going to KO us. There's no way it doesn't. Yep. Queen there. And now the pawn is um, pinned to the king, so I can't even, like, move it to escape. I also can't make, you know, a whole bunch of moves at once to get my king out. There's just no way to stop rook here. This is a uh, this is a good game. First of all, we haven't seen many King's Gambits. Second of all, King's Gambit is a type of thing that's going to beat fundamental moves most of the time. This was this was a, I mean KO. Gotta. Had to think about that, mate. Well, we can look at the game. I was gonna look at it anyway, but the King's Gambit is gonna is gonna throw us off. Um, it's a strong way to, to play against our fundamentals. So what I was saying is that normally we go here and d5. And 
you know, just develop like that. You know, that's what we're going to do. But our opponent played this move, which is a little bit different. So queen h4, definitely a move. But after king f1, they get knight there. And they get all their pieces moving very quickly with tempo. Okay, so that's why it's not like this is a very special, special move. In fact, you can see the evaluations of many moves here, and it's not even in like the top three, or it's barely in the top three, right? So there's lots of other moves. Um, knight f6 we played. He should have gone knight c3 for sure, because it stops a d5. So getting a d5 for us was great, but the bottom line is in the king's gambit, what ends up happening all the time is they take this pawn and they have an open file with the bishop there on the f7 pawn, and it always, always works works well for them. Okay, so that's that's like just something generally speaking that kind of KOs us in this series is how easily white is able to develop here. Yeah, like this is this is just an issue, big issue. So here we should be playing um, probably like bishop g6, right, to get off this, but very easy to underestimate. Even if after rook there, you know, there's a lot of other moves like a6, they also fail to like rook d5 and then knight h7 or just rook f5. He's putting all the pressure there, and it's very tough to defend. Yeah, and there's just there's just no way to stop it. So th this was just a good game, but I definitely felt like it's one that you know pretty much we would all lose. Pretty much we would all lose. Thirty three point seven. Yeah, that's how it felt. That's how it felt. The King's Gambit. I think almost all King's Gambit games we played in this series have been nasty. Uh, we've won some of them, but they've been just fortunate. King's Gambit KOs us. Tried a long castle against that? I don't think so, no. No, I would still short castle. Just got to defend a bit better, but it's tough. Ooh, we haven't seen the Karakhan in a minute. Hopefully you guys remember the moves. Let's start with the two knights. Okay. Bishop there. We've seen this before. Everybody plays the same way. They all think it's the exact same as d4, but it's not. Now, remember to have this move nearly pre-moved. Don't actually pre-move it, but you can pretty much pre-move it. You got to get the hover. You can't actually pre-move it because you're going to look way too prepared. But you got you to make sure you drop that real quick, real quick. You can't take your time because it's going to be too obvious. Ah, he's good. He's good. All right. So where do we put the queen here? There's only one square to go to, and it's e2. Why e2? Because we were about to play this move and win the game with queen takes pawn. Ah, queen c7, a solid one, a solid one. So, pop an idea, thanks for the two months, by the way. So we can't quite do this, but we have a great position. We're just going to continue. d4, bishop f4. Ah, but hang on. We just played knight there. Guys, this is, this is the opening trap, basically, and this is... The, the reason we play this opening is you'll win a lot of games like this. So it might look like I'm doing some fancy stuff, sacrificing. Yes, but it's all part of the opening. So this is this is stuff we've uh, we've looked at, and we can look at it again. But you will definitely get very quick wins in in this Cairo Cam line. I mean, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. This is part of the opening lines that we looked at together. This was a Cairo Cam, and this is habits. Oh, you can't see it again. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Forget what you, what you just saw. Forget what you learned. Pretty much every time I play this line, there's at least a 50% chance of black playing bishop f5. And when black plays bishop f5, I already know that I'm probably going to win this game in about 15 moves or less. So the reason everyone plays this is that the main line... 
this is the mean line of the Karakon. Okay? Everybody plays this. Knight here, and they go e6, or knight there, or knight there, whatever. So, everyone plays the exact same thing against this, because I, th I think it's the same. They bring their bishop out, but what they're forgetting is that instead of d4, I have knight f3. So I can do something uh, a little bit different. Uh, bishop g6, and d4 and knight f3, I'd much rather have knight f3. So now if we do the exact same things, knight e5, it's kind of already in trouble. It's very common, very expected. They're going to play bishop h7. That's what they always do in the other line. And then queen h5, I'm threatening, checkmate. And he doesn't have a good way to defend it. Right? Something like uh, queen b5. Right? If you guard the checkmate, runs into bishop c4. And this is just completely over. Completely over. What does h4 do? Well, when I played h4, I was threatening to win his bishop. Right? h5 traps it. He has no, no squares to go to. That's why he responds with that. Goes here, queen h5. Right? Threatening checkmate. And you'll notice he doesn't have any good way to defend checkmate. This doesn't work. So he has to play the move he played in the game. G6. And make sure your bishop is already ready to drop on that square. So you play bishop to play bishop to c4. And, yeah, you know, seven times out of ten, your opponent's going to take your queen. And you're just going to clap him. This has happened on stream. I've already done this multiple times. Right? There's no other way to guard this, right? It's just... Simply, like, you're threatening checkmate, they're going to play this, you're going to play this in response. They might take it. If they don't, they're going to play e6. Now, after e6, you bring your queen back. What are you threatening here? If I do nothing, what am I threatening? Knight takes. Okay, so that knight takes is something that we know we're threatening. And we're always going to be looking to, to play it. This is a very common checkmate in this line. So, if you place knight here, well, we go here. Right? He goes, uh, bishop here. We go knight here. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, we're threatening knight f7, and all of the logical moves, they don't work. So every single, like, you know, normal move that you can think of doesn't work. Knight d7 also fails. It's the exact same tactic. So... Like, you're definitely going to get some very, very fast wins in this line. What my opponent did was he went queen c7. So I said, okay, he's actually uh, guarding this. So I can't do it right now. I'm just going to play d4. Right? So he actually played a good move. But after d4, he kind of forgot about my threat or didn't notice it initially. And he goes knight to d7. And if you guys saw the game, it ended the exact same way. It ended the exact same way. So, if you remember the knight takes f7 thing, if you remember these moves in the opening, you will definitely, definitely get some wins in like less than 15 moves. Okay, e 45 That's how we want to start. d4, I don't think we've seen this opening. Uh... Definitely don't think we've seen this opening. Now he goes here. Let's just take it and see what happens. Let's take and see. Let's take everything. I want to see what he's up to. He's playing a uh, a very interesting opening. And normally you don't want to be taking pawns, but you know he's offering. I'm. Let's see it. Let's see it, dude. Let's see it. Danish gambit, exactly. So um, what I would say is. Generally speaking, if you accept, you know, a whole bunch of bonds like that, you have to expect to uh, maybe need to give one or some of them back. Let's just see what happens if we um, get all our pieces developed without really calculating, because I don't think this is a very good move, but e5 hits our knight. We actually can go to e4. We can technically go there because it's pinned. But we're we're really asking for it here. Why am I giving a check? Because if I give a check, he has to respond to it, and then I get another knight move. I get to make a move in the open. Trading pieces. Okay, that's one thing I think we can agree on. We always want to trade pieces when we're up as many pawns as we are. So let's castle to safety.
Oh, I know express training. Believe me, that's what we're going to be looking at afterwards. That's what we're going to be looking at afterwards. This is why you don't accept, you know, crazy, crazy things like this. So it might work out for us in this game, but it doesn't mean that it's you know, something we, we want to play. I was actually expecting him to do that move, and then, <laughs> then we would have been in trouble. Now he has nothing. I agree. Now, now it looks, um, you know, fairly comfortable for us. We still don't want to have the queen on open files. We want to put the queen somewhere else. Can't really go anywhere else, but what do I always say? Hey, if we can offer trades, do it. I always want to do trades when I'm up material. Right now I'm up two pawns. He doesn't want to, uh, to go for them. Let's uh, go bishop here, pinning the knight. And after bishop takes knight, that's going to be a trade. That's going to be a trade. Okay, rook b1. Got to move my queen. Uh, again, I'm just going to stick with the theme. I'm going to go here, offer a trade. Again, he's not having it, but that's at least a trade for me. And that looks like a trade for me, right? And that's that's all my game is going to be from now on. Just me trying to trade with him. Okay. Take, take. This is threatened. So I think b6 is reasonable. What do I want to do? Bring the rooks to the middle, get h6. And go for trades, of course. And go for trades. However, queen needs to go somewhere safe. I know it's not pretty, but we're going to play queen c5. It's another trade. It's another trade. He is really not having it. He's really not having it. Let's offer another trade. <laughs> Let's offer another trade. I mean, he's got to be pissed off by now. Right? This can't be, this can't be fun for him. Just take the damn queen, buddy. I mean, I would be, I would be on tilt for sure. Let's guard our pawn. And you know what this pawn lets me do? It lets me do this move, which is another trade. Let's offer another trade. Oh, he's got to be. This is, this is too much, right? He's got to be pissed. Oh, no, you slipped up, buddy. That's a trade. <laughs> That's that's a trade. Sorry, dude. I mean, you thought you thought you had me there with no trades, but uh, it's not going to work like that. Doesn't take no for an answer. H six says Neil, rookie eight. Now they're all they're all good suggestions, but I think we know what would piss him off more. His queen. He's on so much tilt. Okay, we need to look at that game because it was a uh, it was a serious opening. It was a uh, like two or three pawns that I took in a row. Okay, what would I recommend? Probably not to ever go into this opening because what's the evaluation? It's like minus one. And have a look at the way the game went and you'll see what I mean by I don't want you guys to play this opening. So what should he have played? He should have played this. Hitting the knight, threatening checkmate. And what do I need to do? I need to play, well, I need to find knight g5, takes, and allow this. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, whole, the whole thing is weird. The whole thing is weird. So I, I don't think we should be going anywhere near this opening. It's not, like, fundamentals are not going to work against extremely hyper-aggressive openings like this. So I'm not a fan. I, I, I think that going all the way here is taking too much. Um, the... That's sort of like the hack if you're ever faced with a tough gambit. 
that you don't really know or you don't really want to go into because you're scared of exactly what could have happened in this game. The way to refuse any gambit is usually to just push the pawn forward. So if you ever don't want to go into something like this, just play this pawn move. I know it looks weird. It's like, you know, just giving a pawn back for nothing. But that's the way, that's the way that you always get out of going into gambits. You can just take, or sorry, push. Then you can, you know, develop your pieces a bit more normally. So if you're looking for a way out, this is always it. Uh, I also think that taking here, but then not taking the next one is also reasonable. Also reasonable. But I, st I think it's still the same type of position. So I would say what we want to do is generally D3 is the, the way out of it. What is the best move in my opinion? It's probably going to be D5. Um, I think that is hands down the best move against this gambit. Uh, the safest move is going to be D3. And also a good move, but not in the style of habits, is going to be pawn takes pawn. I'm not, I'm not a fan of this. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I think white gets exactly what he wants from the opening. Gets exactly what he wants from the opening. So I like, um, I like D3 because it's safe. Pieces can get out. Best move, though, I think is D5. Best move, I think, is D5. Right? And if they take... We can take back, we can go knight f6, we can take this guy now, for example. Even taking here is very okay. I know it looks like maybe not so good, but look how easily the, the pieces develop here. The castle is very solid. As you can see, the evaluation, 0, 0.00. Okay, so there's lots and lots of uh, poison if you start taking all these pawns for your opponent. In our game, he had some very good lines he could have played. He didn't, he ended up just trading, and then obviously I'm doing very well. And then my guy, I, see, my trades were not even good moves, by the way. Right? This is a mistake. He should take that. But he just didn't want to the whole game. <laughs> Again, it's a terrible move. But I knew that it would tilt him. <laughs> Queen c5 is not a good move. <laughs> it blunders the entire advantage. But, you know, we were playing the, playing the man there, so to speak. Play the opponent. Not the board. The great pretender. Okay. E4. And F3. Seen this before. Same opening from me. Should be no surprises here. Ah. Bishop G4. Let's stop that. Let's stop that. Okay. He goes A6. Um, here. I can't play D4. He's got that covered. So we're going to play this he goes h6 we're going to castle what do you guys think is next of course it is bishop to e3 and whoa huh. whoa g4 ultra aggressive okay okay let's take that takes back some issues here he has a pin on our knight we also can't kick him out with h3 very annoying. Very annoying. We can't kick him out with h3. So his bishop basically can stay there the whole game. The whole game. And if I move my queen, he can take. Right? And also double my pawns. I don't want that to happen. So I need to leave my queen guarding this knight. Trading bishops doesn't help because remember, my bishop is here for knight d4. Okay? If knight d4 happens, I need to take it right away with the bishop. That's the plan. Okay. So you can't really move the queen anywhere except e2. So just go there. I'm just going to bring my pieces to the middle. Uh, and we see what happens. Knight h4. So he has a very specific. Uh, maneuver that he's utilizing here. Knight to h4. You notice I have I have literally no way to, to prevent myself from getting double pawns. It's impossible. So uh, we are going to get double pawns, and then what's going to happen is this file is going to open up. And I mean, I made it the way I've been telling you guys to mate your opponents. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do about this? Well, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. 
Knight d4. Okay, at least I know what I'm doing against this move because <laughs> there's no way I can let this happen. So I, I have to get rid of it. I have to get rid of it. Okay, bishop takes. What should I be doing? Definitely, definitely playing in the center. Okay, which means d4. I want to open the middle of the board up at all costs. I need to. Okay, he goes c6. Where should my knight go? Um, I, I think e3 is the most central square and happens to hit the bishop as well. Knight f6. What? Wait, why is everyone saying knight f6? Why is everyone making the exact same blunder? Huh? That was a coordinated attack. I'm going to take on f3. Hope you don't mind. I decided to go knight e3. I decided I should keep my peace. Ah, queen g5. Tell me what happens if I move my king. He wants to mate me on g2. I wonder if he thinks the queen g2 is mate. Uh, I hope he does. Damn it. Damn it. Guys, I think we're in trouble here. I think we're in trouble here. Because knight g4, remember, there's just h5 losing a, losing a piece. So, well, king's got to move. Go up. Okay, Nick. I go up. The rook is coming, Sag. Oh, never mind. Maybe it's not. How do we play good defense here, guys? How do we play good defense? We need to bring pieces towards my king. My king is wide open. My king is wide open. Rooks. Rooks, you won. Yes. Yes. Rooks. Need to bring something over here. Knight takes f3, and what should I do now? Rook g4 next. Thank you to Andy, who just checkmated himself in one move. All right, congratulations, Andy. Oh, congratulations to VHTV and Harvey as well. We have a few guys looking to checkmate themselves in one move. Rook g3. Not only preventing getting checkmated in one move, but after King G2, aren't we aren't we getting back? We're getting back in there, right? We're crawling back in our shell. This is great. He's attacking with two pieces, and that's what playing good defense is all about. Okay, okay. Now what do we do? Now what are we supposed to do? Knight f5. Who knows? Do you think he's the type of guy to trade queens? He might not. Rook h1 would also be a good move. Yep. Rook h1 would also be a good move. High time. Hey, that happens. Especially when you get attacked. But he might want to go like queen here. Thinking that he doesn't want to trade queens because he's attacking. When really he should be trading queens. Because I have 16 seconds. <laughs> However, there's a good chance that he goes here. Good chance. And he will be unhappy to see rook g4. Oh, good move by him. Well, we've got to trade. The rook's going to be under attack. Got to move the rook. But he's got us... Uh, he's got us in a tough position we can't even really pre-move in. Can't really pre-move here at all. d5, another strong move. We're just we're waiting we're, we're waiting for rook g8. Mm, it's not happening. It's not happening. Rook g8 for the boys. Just do it for the boys. Oh, there's hope. 
check. Uh, free move this. Uh, yeah, that's going to happen when you get viciously attacked. But this was a great game. This was a great game. Do you see how quickly? Yeah, of course he wants to rematch. Of course he wants to rematch. Did you see how quickly we basically got, well, we were nearly lost in this game? Okay, not a spectacular game by anybody involved. <laughs> now, our opening, I mean, we've been playing this the entire time. So, it's 0, 0.00. Black goes G5, and it's excellent. Even though the evaluation suddenly goes to plus one. That seems uh seems a little off, if you ask me. Now, after bishop here, he, we see the point of g5. He wants to play g4, and if we take, the bishop arrives there. And how are you supposed to handle this? This is very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. The knight, look at his maneuver. Knight e7. Knight g6. And knight h4. And his minus almost seven. Minus seven. Right? And he is not up anything. That's how powerful. That's how powerful the the well the pin is. That's how powerful bishop g4 is. Not a great move there. He's had takes on f3 for a while. Oh, yeah, let's analyze. Yeah, thanks, guys. 93. Queen g5. Now, sad days, but our king has to move. Our king has to move. King h3, I mean, he blunders there because basically he can do the exact same thing without our rook getting to g1. Yeah, and all of a sudden we're we're pretty much back in this game, but we have 29 seconds because the entire game we've been pretty much getting checkmated on the spot. Very tough performance. So how can we deal with this actually? Because I would say up till here, isn't everything like exactly how we would normally do it? Like this is this is regular. He just plays g5 and his threat is g4. So how are we gonna handle this for next time? How are we gonna handle this? G4, says Canadian Rock fan. No, thank you. No, thank you. So knight h2 handles g4. I would love a move that, that wasn't like a knight to the side of the board, if possible, because I'm trying to avoid these types of moves. Um, But it does look difficult because if you do something like knight here, for example, it might be a great move. But still, after g4, you still need to permit this pin. And this pin is very annoying. This pin is very annoying. The only thing that knight d5 lets me do is it lets me play c3 and d4, just as ideas. Like c3, bishop, d4. Like getting d4 is very important. g5. This I, I find this move very annoying. You know what I might do? is I might just go for knight d5, c3, d4. I think that's, that's going to be the way I handle it. h3 was a mistake in the beginning. I agree to an extent, but the reason we are playing h3 is because we don't want to allow um, bishop to g4. Right, because this pin just basically kills us when it happens. So we can, we can allow that pin again, but... I don't know. I would say, I would say, I would say this, c3, try to play bishop e3, d4. If he's going to play over here, I should play in the center. I should play in the center. That's, that's just, uh, I think what we have to do. Yes, there's a pin, but he can't just, you know, walk over here because, guys, imagine black plays this, trying to go like that. Oh, well, I think everyone in chat would be able to find this one. Knight f6, that's right. Oh, I'm playing my crew.
Sounds uh sounds dangerous. Definitely seems like he plays the London. You know what I mean? The question is which London does he play? See this guy or this guy? We haven't seen the Jobava London in a while. We used to see it all the time. So last time we played against this, I played e6. Next move h6. We wanna um, vibe check the bishop, as someone said. And whenever you see these guys lined up on this pawn right here, there's lots of other moves you could try, but I always recommend just play a6 and don't let that happen. That's my recommendation. c5, knight there, bishop there, that's what I'm gonna do. Thanks, and Dusty with the two months. Thanks, and Dusty. Drowns in Water is here for seven months. Appreciate it, guys. Knight e2, have no idea what that move's all about. I'm gonna go here and castle next turn. Some nice, uh, easy moves, I wanna say. Let's castle. Now, how do I get rid of this guy? Well, that doesn't look too bad, does it? Queen to c7. How does he keep the knight there? I don't see, I don't see. You're with $20. He says, sorry, I meant peak quality content. But you suppose it would come from quality character. Oh, so the... I thought he was appreciating my quality. And now he's confirmed with another $20 that he's not appreciating my quality. He doesn't appreciate my quality. He hates my quality. But he likes the quality content. Okay, confirmed. Got it. I understand your point now, Eeyore. Uh, Bishop h2. Very strange move. Very strange move. Um, I think I'm going to win this pawn. I appreciate the support, though, Eeyore. $30, $30 is uh, very generous. Just glad you're enjoying it, man. I am. Imagine not liking my quality. Whoa! Okay, we got to save our bishop. Now, what do we want to do with the rest of our pieces? What, what is going on here? Okay. Anyway, um, rest of our pieces need to develop. Um, putting our bishop there makes some sense. Opening the center makes some sense. I think just a nice chill move like this. Rooks to the middle is very, 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 very solid. That's all we need. That's all we need. Okay. Castles. Not only do we need some random pawn moves, but random or not, we're, we can full send it here, guys. We can full send it. He's going to be full sending it as well. So I have to, have to be careful of that. I wonder if... Did someone... Was someone chatting with Alan? Or did Alan just come in the chat, which he never does, and just type... At GME short seller, are you actually short selling GME? Because if you are, you'd be in the dumpster behind Wendy's right now. Yeah. Is that part of a conversation or did, was, is Alan just out here? <laughs> is Alan just out here? <laughs> just a random comment. Alan's just putting people in body bags right now. I, I'm here for it, you know? I'm here for it. Just stopping by. Hello, BJH. Thanks for the three months by you, Fire. Yeah, yeah, this is, guys, remember, this is the London Bishop, one of the most powerful pieces on the board. Okay, queen, c2. I think it's, I mean, I think we just do this, right? I think we just keep full sending. I said I was going to be sending her. Okay, g5. Yes, it's about time. I mean, this move has been, uh, been waiting to happen. Waiting to happen. Our knight needs to move now. Um, there is a hanging knight here, but 
ours drops as well. So I think I'm going to save my piece. I'm going to go here. This guy. This guy. Hello to Johnny DJ. Um, okay. This looks like a free piece to me. Wonder what he's planning here. I genuinely do. He might move like let me just hang his rook. We have two. I think that's a good move. Um so the first thing is I'm definitely gonna open like the king a little bit. I think I think that's uh always gonna be good. Um I will also bring a rook to the open file near that king. Can't be bad. Can't be bad. He goes queen h4. Now, I'm not exactly sure what he's threatening. But I see what he wants to threaten. Like, something to do with some mate like that. But I think we can bring our queen back into the middle of the board. Not only are we threatening checkmate in one, but, you know, our queen in the corner is not doing much. g6 incoming. I think g6 is incoming by him. So king there, he's I mean he's he's covering that. Uh free pawn doesn't look bad. I think we just go for this. Bishop a4. I knew I could get some of you guys with bishop a4. Oh, I knew I could get everyone with bishop a4. Guys, look at the whole board. Look at the whole board, please. Yeah, my boy Harvey's over there. He ain't saying shit. Harvey was probably like, Bishop A4 at home. We all know my man Harvey ain't typing shit. <laughs> Let's bring the knight in. Let's bring the knight in. Queen E2, definitely a good move. After rook there, you would, you would need to find the follow-up. That's all. D4, then Bishop A4. Oh, come on, Tommy. Can't be hanging your bishop like that. There's no way that you see queen c3 mate there, Tommy. That's way too advanced for you. Covering. Okay. How about we double the rooks on the open file? Double rooks on the open file. I'm hoping that I'll still be able to win this game. Rook b8 and like rook b2. C4 is okay. Yeah, C4, D4, all been decent moves. I'm trying to approach it in a very, like, I don't know, not a very complicated way. Doubling on the open file, trying to follow some of the, the principles that we've uh, we've been using. But yeah, Rook here is going to lead to mate. I think it's very hard for him to stop. And checkmate. Yep, that was a uh, that was a game where unfortunately his pieces were just really poorly placed for the whole game. You know, like he played bishop h two, lost the pawn in the center, and you know he just put everybody in a jail here. Okay, so we continue. We go for fifteen fifty. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, he is literally fifteen fifty. Well, we got to take it from him. E4, E5. Let's go. Okay. Porsche attack. Thanks, man. Happy to have you here. Happy to have you here. Okay, he goes bishop there. Well, this should be an A6, but... A little concerned about my pawn. I hope. Yeah, I hope. 
Uh, whoa, okay, I was, yeah, I was hoping for a lot. I didn't think I'd be this lucky. Okay, so that is a pawn. And, okay, yeah, wow. You're just, you're just giving it up. Um, bishop g4, maybe. No, we, we want to do knights before bishops. Let's not, let's not forget the basics here. Knight takes d4. Okay, there's a pawn. Do we take pawns in the center before we save our king? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, e5. Where does our knight go? Central squares, if available. Let's go to the center. Knight's out, exactly. Oh, and if he's going to give me bishop for knight, I feel like I'll always take that, uh, that trade. Okay, let's keep developing. Got this bishop out. Oh, Tommy, uh, Harvey typed something in chat. Can you find a way to roast them real quick? He said, he said I like rerouting knights to pretend I'm a GM sometimes. Tommy, quick, he, he typed something. We got to roast them. Come up with something, Tommy. Let's save our bishop. Okay, let's uh, make sure to get the rooks to the middle. Next move is going to be queen, and then rook. Tommy says, maybe you should reroute your facial features so you can pretend you're good looking. Damn. All right. Har Harvey's in the afterlife now. <laughs> Harvey is deceased. He's never typing again. I swear to God. He's, he's going to rethink this whole Twitch chat thing. My goodness. Who's Harvey? We don't know. We don't know who he is. But he's out here. I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. H6. Okay, knight there. Um, my queen has to defend my bishop. A little bit annoying. Um, I either have to give up this bishop for the knight, or I have to move my queen like back here. So, very tough decision. Very tough decision. Normally, you don't want to give up, um, you know, bishop for knight unless there's a reason. But I think we're we're getting close to to having a reason. We're getting close. Bishop takes f5 is definitely something to consider. I am going to be stubborn and keep my bishops. Knight d4. Is he giving me a center pawn? Huh? <laughs> okay. Let's hope it doesn't backfire, but I'm going to take that center pawn. Harvey says hazing, no problem. You see? You see, Harvey understands. Harvey understands. It's just tough love. Okay. Knight c6 is a very strong move by my opponent. I am going to take that rook. And you know what? If I take this, I lose my rook. So I got to save this guy. G5. Ooh, unfortunately for JH, that's going to be free material that I will take. Um, I would say it's more in my interest to take this free material than this free material. But it's just a funny move, G5, because he's got two knights hanging. It's like, whoa, what's going on, dude? He takes here. It's like, I mean, I could take it, but <laughs> what are we What are we really talking about here? Of course, I'm going to take this knight as well. <laughs> takes. Now if I take, I'm going to be losing this bishop. So I'm going to be moving my queen this way. Might look like a complicated move, but 
It's all about making sure I don't lose a piece. Okay. Queen takes pawn. Let's trade. Exactly, Emmy Mac. You got it. You got it. Take. Take. Force the queens off. Exactly. Now we have a pass pawn here. We can full send it. Oh, we don't even need to. Two bishops. That's enough. GG. I mean, once you trade queens with these guys, they pretty much all just resign. We've seen that. <laughs> 1500s without queens are like 1200s, basically. 1554. We'll take it. We'll take it. 1550 is a, a good rating increase for today. You know, we are the, the best student imaginable. Look at that. Just look at this improvement chart. You know, just an, what an amazing, amazing chart. This is the ideal student. Spirit.